integration and acceptance without being permissive. Letting a being be. Greetings, and I welcome you. Thank you so much for coming in and listening to me. I hope you are well. Zarel here. Today I would like to bring a particularly important key to protecting and keeping your frequency and vibration high, and which could help you to adopt a much happier and healthier lifestyle. After all, the two go hand in hand. Although this applies to all possible places, and as we have talked about before, the earth is a place that is not designed to be fair at all. It is designed to cause frustration, blockages, anger, sadness. And why this is kept that way can be debated, either to forcefully cause the consciousnesses that are going to live there to learn to be happy even in spite of all that, or to feed the bad energies to those who need them to survive. Perhaps all at the same time. Perhaps, precisely because of this, there is a general tendency to think that all is as it should be among the members of the United Federation of Planets, for, from a twisted point of view, some might even say that it is a win-win, for ultimately no one loses out, since one never ceases to be the ultimate and primary consciousness with the power to live or experience whatever, in inverted commas, one desires. And I say in inverted commas, because I tend to think that a consciousness manifests a life experience based on where its thoughts and ideas take it, whether constructive or destructive. And however high or expanded that consciousness may be, the nature or essence of source is to imagine, to create, to experience, a continuous flow of ideas and sensations, giving rise to more of all of these. And all of this can be expressed in a more scientific way and even closer to something more physical or energetic, but in the end, simplified, that's what it is. So I tend to see it as the source is not an infallible, supreme being in that sense. It's you, or it's each of us individually, letting those thoughts flow. And sometimes, we get it wrong. We fall into our own traps and devote much more attention to what ends up leading us to be compliant with negative or painful events, rather than remaining calm with attention on those magical things that life is able to offer, because it really can be magical and really poetic and ironic in a good way. And not only by focusing on the good things that you live and want to live, or that you want to attract or manifest in your life, but also by shifting the importance or the harshness on the things that are already in your life, or even the things that might come to pass. One of the attitudes that can most negatively influence your frequency, and most sabotage your happiness, is resistance to those things that are not as we want or believe they should be. And this is something fully understandable, and something that some of us here also often have to deal with. I myself am strongly against easy resignation or defeatism, and the thought or tendency to stand still in the face of injustice or difficulty. And very often, this philosophy has helped me to survive and get through difficulties. However, sometimes we develop such resistance or rejection towards what we are fighting against, that we end up feeding the egregore of what we don't want in our lives. Therefore, we must learn to act to solve those things that hurt or bother us from determination and strength, and never from arrogance or frustration, because in the end this could be playing against you. And not only to achieve our goals and get a better life. That will be the consequence of changing your mindset. What is really important is, when you truly learn to integrate and stop resisting the idea that some things or people are not as we would like them to be, Inevitably your life becomes better from that very moment, without the need to wait to change anything, because you yourself live much more serene, happy and untouchable to bad energies and lower astral entities. This does not mean to stop moving. It does not mean to stop acting. It does not mean allowing what you believe to be regressive and unjust. It means accepting and integrating that the situation is what it is. That people are what they are, and they are the way they are. That your range of action may be limited. That you might fail. 
And yet, in spite of all this, you move towards what you believe or consider to be right, driven by your ethics, your values, your determination and with your head held high, whatever the outcome, and however terrified you may be of failure. For this very reason, sometimes what may seem at first sight to be a struggle between good and evil, is nothing more than the inevitable clash between strongly held perspectives on what is right, and this helps us to understand the situations and clashes that can occur, while still feeling the responsibility and the urge to move towards where those values lead us. With all this said, and understanding it well, I will always stand by the idea that influencing people through deception, half-truths or outright lies cannot be considered ethical or natural in the evolution of, for example, a planetary society. Whatever the supposed ultimate purpose, I always get sidetracked. Now I don't know how to get back to where I wanted to be. One of the great evils of society on earth comes from not letting things be. Not letting people be or evolve naturally as they should. But paradoxically, its inhabitants also suffer from resisting that circumstances and people are dark and unjust at times. This comes about because their armors, their consciousness harbors memories of previous lives, where they did not have to experience such injustice and suffering, and such darkness. They are experiencing something that is against their nature, and it is largely that very thing that makes them very ill in the end. Because the soul ends up withdrawing, or wanting to stop having that experience much faster than it would in a peaceful, just and calm interstellar society. But at the same time, I can't help but recommend that you learn to integrate where you are. Integrate it. There are unjust things. There is a strong darkness. There are really bad people, from your point of view, so bad that you didn't even imagine that there could be such a thing. Look at it like the characters and the story of a video game. When you're playing the game, you don't think like this. How bad is the villain? How come I get health deducted from the monsters when they attack me? That NPC is really dumb. How can he say that he hates white bunnies? How can he think like that? You just assume that this NPC is the way he is and that you can dislike him a lot and go on with your game. The villain is meant to be a villain and you'll just see him and understand more or less what he's like and why and do what you think you should do. Of course, monsters deplete your health when they hit you, you see that as a normal thing. Just avoid them or deal with them. Neither of those things make it impossible for you to complete your quest. It may make it more difficult at best. Accept that evil is evil. It will tend to self-destruct sooner or later because its actions have consequences. Act to keep it out of your life or the lives of those you care about if you want to, but accept that it exists, and recognize your strength. And also, speaking of people who do not act exactly as we would like them to act, even if they are not evil or regressive, learn to accept them and let them be as they are. Not only for your own happiness and peace of mind, but for theirs. This is very important if it is the case of someone you care for and love very much. As I said a few minutes ago, a being tends to unhappiness and extreme frustration when it is not allowed to be what it naturally is. A puppy should be a puppy, do puppy things, run like a puppy, sniff like a puppy, bark like a puppy and dig like a puppy. If he cannot do what his genetics dictate, which is nothing more than the very representation of what his consciousness is, to a greater or lesser extent it will end up generating a strong frustration that will affect his health sooner or later. It is up to the people responsible for those little people they care for to give them their moments to be themselves, or to protect them in case that is putting them in danger, but they must have their moments to be who they are, and to feel that they are respected and accepted for who they are. A puppy should be able to be a puppy, a Lyrian should be able to be a Lyrian, an Irma should be able to be an Irma. 
and a being of light should be able to be a being of light. Or at least, they should be able to feel that they can be when they need to be. To feel that they are accepted for who and what they are, so that in the future they can have a strong and sound mind, which will translate into good health in every way, and they can feel proud of who they are, and never self-conscious. Enjoying a long, healthy and happy life within what life itself throws at us. And you, having learned to accept and integrate the existence of that which is not as you want it to be, will enjoy all that too. But never forget to allow yourself to be what you are. I hope to see you here very soon. Best regards. Zia Lavera. <laughs>